everyone, it is Demo Donna here. Thank you for joining me. Tonight we are going to have some fun. I am going to be using one, two, three, four, four different really fun dyes with pink and mane. And I'm also going to be using one of those is actually a new die set with the February release. And another one is a new stamp and die set with the February release. So hi everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. I and let me know where you're watching from. That will be fun. If you're new to Pink and Main, if you have a bunch of Pink and Main stuff and you've learned something new tonight, I'd love to hear about that. If you're watching on replay, hi and thanks for joining me. And I'd love to hear if you're watching a replay as well. And I've got a lot of fun things to show you. We're also going to be playing with flocking. I've been teasing a lot of my customers that I teach classes to that I am going to be showing some flocking techniques. So I am definitely going to do that tonight. I just kind of added this in about the last hour. So I'm super excited to do that. So let's flip our screens. This will take me two seconds. And we are going to start creating. If you head on over to pinkandmain.com tonight and you want to go shopping because you were inspired by this live, please use code DEMODONNA, all one word, D-E-M-O-D-O-N-N-A, for 10% discount on all your products. That's excluding the subscriptions. And just to let Pink and Main know that I sent you. All right. Let's get started, everybody. So I am going to add this guy. Sorry. I will figure this out. There we go. Oh, sorry, guys. One day. One, I'm, this is what? Is this my second? This is my third. This is my third live using this system. So... One day I will figure it out. Sorry for that. And I just want to make sure everyone can hear me now. Can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up. Let me know I'm not talking to myself and my dog. Although he's an amazing crafter. He's so good walking around with glitter on his face. Thank you. Thank you for the yes. That is good to know. And I'd love to see your hearts tonight. If you enjoy what you are seeing and you're learning some new things. Here are my cough drops. I'm glad that that made the screen tonight. Okay, to get started, I am using an A2 card base. And usually when I do lives or I'm just playing around, I just actually take a sheet of eight and a half by 11 and I just cut it into quarters. And I create 99% of my cards on just a regular card base versus an open up card. So therefore I have a nice flat surface to work on. And then I take this and put it on a card base. Also, if I mess my backing up, I'm not messing up a whole card front. And I know a lot of you have seen me demo and probably know that already, but I just wanted to share that little tidbit. Okay, the background of my card base are these two awesome stencils. They're not stencils. They are two awesome dies. And these are called plaid cover die A and B. And I will go in after this live and add all of the products into the description for it. So if you have any questions too on any of the products or you need help finding them, they are all available at pinkandmain.com. And we are happy to help in any way we can. Okay, so you have these two fabulous layering dies. So I don't know about you guys, but I am crazy about plaid. It's so great for the holidays. It's so great for a background for masculine cards. And the cool thing about having dies, I was about to call these stencils again. The cool thing about having dies is you can create any color you want. So for instance, I have this really beautiful thinking of you card and I did more of like a grid work on the back than have it really look like plaid. So again, the possibilities are endless, which is 
what I love about dyes, and I know I've probably said this a million times, but just wanted you to see how cool these are in different types of colors. So I did a nice light green for my background. And then what I'm putting on top of it is a really pretty soft purple for my color palette for tonight. And I do want to just let you guys know this being a more detailed stencil, we all have our little tricks on how to cut out the perfect detail stencil. Michelle was great and helped me out. What really worked for me was putting some little shims. When I run this through my die, I just put four little pieces of paper. These were kind of my trouble areas with getting a nice clean cut. So I basically just put, put four little squares over these pieces and then ran that through. And from that moment on, I had a nice, perfect cut out die. So I know we all have our tricks. What are some of your favorite tricks? Share with us all. This is how we all get through being fabulous crafters is sharing the tricks of the trade with each other. All right, so I am first going to just add a little glue to my green one here, and I am just using some craft glue, and this is a fast-drying white craft glue, so whatever you have available will work great, and since it's paper to paper, I am not overly concerned about making sure it's fully glued. It's going to be just fine. And of course, when you're using a wet adhesive, you have a little extra time to wiggle it around to make sure it's where you want it. So once I'm happy with that, I just go ahead and give it a little pressure and push down. And you wanna use a wet craft glue versus a tacky adhesive. So in case any glue squeezes out from the edges, you can just wipe that away with your clean fingers, mind you. You don't wanna do that with your dirty fingers. And there is layer number one. Layer number two, number two, I am going to, again, just take my craft glue and I am going to just add a little layer all around the outside. What I really love about these dies is they have a nice thicker border all around the edges. So like if this was really fine detailing, like the inside of this, that would be a little trickier to glue. So I love that actually applying it to your card was considered when designing this die. All right, so just like that, I now have a one of a kind, beautiful plaid background that is going to match my card. I mean, I feel like it's kind of magical. How many of you out there have this die and have been using it forever and keeping it from me? Just kidding. How many of you out there have this die and have been using it forever and have a ton of fun cards that you have created with this? I mean, just this alone, this could even be a card front with just a cute little happy birthday on it. Just that's how simple it is. Two dies and you've got an awesome background or it could be the main focus of your card. All right. The next thing I'm going to show you guys are brand new. This is a February release. There actually are a couple different ones. This is the one I chose to use tonight. There are a release of new border dies, so check them out. They're really cool. Again, I'm just using this one tonight, but I will be incorporating the other new ones into some upcoming lives or some of my cards. What I love about these border dies, they are all six inches long. So some border dies that I've used in the past don't go the full length longwise of your A2 card. So you're stuck just using them that certain length. You can't really move them around. The fact that these are six inches long, I can really play with layering the pattern and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if you've never used a border die and this looks kind of funky to you, it's really simple. You are going to take your cardstock. So I've cut out my cardstock the length that I want it to be. So this is my five and a half by one inch long because I am going to do a gradual laying of layering of my borders. 
So what I did was I cut out my first strip here, which is five and a half by one inch. Then I cut out my next color, five and a half by a quarter. And then my third, the green, five and a half by half an inch. So I just went up with quarter inches for my layering. And then I am just simply, make sure when you're cutting all of these out that the you're doing the design the right way. So for instance, if I were to do it this way, I this is the way I wanna do it. This way is not cutting, is what I'm trying to say. This line here is not cutting. So the cutting edge is where those beautiful scallops are. So I am gonna take my beautiful scallops and you can even put a little washi tape. I'm just putting them right up to the top with each of them and then running it through my die cut machine. So this might be, be a little easier to see because it's not white. But I just put it right up to the top and then run that through my die cut machine. And I did that three times and I also moved around my die. So these actually create fun different patterns. So for instance, if I cut them all out in the exact same place, they would end up just like this when I layer them, which also looks cute too, but I wanted a little bit more movement, kind of like a fun little grassy hill in the background. So I made sure when I cut out my border that I shifted my die a little bit every time. Okay, let's get these guys attached to my paper. And then we are gonna go over a few more fun little techniques. I'm gonna attach the larger one first. So again, this was an inch and a half. And I'm just gonna add a little rolly adhesive, just like that. And I'm just gonna layer this up. You can even, if you wanna leave a purple border, you can do that. You could have even cut this a little bit smaller and had that go into the frame, which I didn't think of that until this moment. Which, you know, that's fun. That's fun with a live show. You sometimes get new ideas just by creating your card. So there is layer number one. Here is layer number two. And is anybody out there new to border dies? You've never tried them, you've seen them, but not really sure how to use them. Another fun thing that I did with these border dies is I actually would put two borders together and then put the washi tape in and I cut out little strips. So for instance, there was the scalloped edge on both sides and created a nice little border as well. So lots of fun, especially playing with the different layers, moving your little scallops around so you can create more of a organic wave pattern which was fun. So there is my little border on the bottom. And when cutting out my dies here, I got a little line across the bottom, which was fine because what I wanted to do is take my easy tear tape, and this is a quarter inch. There is the eighth inch, the quarter inch, as well as the half inch as well as the sheets. And I will be using the half, the quarter inch tonight and the sheets. So I'm gonna take that little border and I'm just gonna line it up right there. Use my finger tools to push that down. Take my scissors and I am just going to flip this over and I'm gonna trim my little edges off. And you can always save these little pieces and use them to adhere your other elements that you're adding to your paper. So I am going to trim that end and trim this end. And now I have a nice quarter inch by five and a half <coughs> border there. And what we're gonna do next is one of my favorite techniques. <laughs> I've probably been demoing this for at least 15 years. So I am gonna peel off that backing and now I am gonna take my favorite glitter color, which is ice rink, and I'm gonna open my jar up there, grab myself a coffee filter. It's 
So important tools when you're working with glitter, your finger tools, your lovely tapes as well. Coffee filter for me is a must have. You can also use scrap paper and the cleanup brush. So the cleanup brush is also available as long as well as the glitter and the borders and all these fun item, items. I don't know why I can't speak tonight. I clearly should have practiced a little me, 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 getting my words out before coming on. But you know, I know you guys all speak my language. Okay, I am gonna take my ice rink and I am just going to sprinkle that. And now I have a nice, I have a nice mountain of glitter. I know some of you out there do a little tap, tap, tap and add like one sprinkle of glitter at a time. Don't worry, whatever you don't use is going back into your jar. So I just pour it all out. I'm gonna take my finger tool, I'm applying some pressure and all of that is getting pushed right into my tape. So that's creating a really nice permanent glitter border. And now look at that, I have a really fun little bit of shimmer. I hope my, oh good, my camera is picking it up. I'm like, can you guys see that really cute glittery shimmery border? Yes, you can. And now it covers up that little line that was left over from the indent on running that through my die cut machine. Okay, I am going to taco up my coffee filter, tap in that excess glitter, and look at that. All that glitter is saved for the next time I go to use my jar. So none wasted, except for those three sprinkles on my coffee filter. Okay, I also use my cleanup brush to clean up my table and my fingers. It's not just used for my actual work. It's a clean up everything brush. That's what it should be called. Clean up everything brush. All right, so look at my card base so far. Lots of fun. We have so far layered one, two, three, four, five, six different layers. I've got my two layers of my plaid die, three different layers of that really fun scallop border. And then I've got another layer of that beautiful ice rink glitter and the quarter inch easy tear tape. Okay, next what we are gonna do, we're actually gonna layer our flowers next. So I did use, these are adorable. If you haven't seen all of the new Easter stamp and die sets, make sure you go check those out tonight. There are some really fun ones. And I am flipping this over so you can actually see it. Uh, this guy is called For Peeps Sake, and it is super cute. I've never seen, and maybe I just haven't looked hard enough, I've never seen Peeps and marshmallows combo together like this and it is just adorable and you've also got some really fun look at little like easter s'mores i love it very cute and you also have some really cute little sayings uh, how fun is that i bet peeps never even thought of themselves as being used in s'mores easter s'mores i think you know it's going to be a big trend this holiday season and you've also got the coordinating die set so when I am actually working with a wet medium, watercolors, the beautiful, um, I never say, um, it's, I love that my brain is like on the fritz tonight, maybe because it's a Monday. Did we all have a long weekend? I spent my weekend watching youth hockey and that why that is why my brain is probably fried. So woohoo, hopping into Monday, everybody, trying to use sentences. Okay, so when I'm using a wet medium, like the water gems is what I was trying to say, or watercolor pencils, or any wet adhesive, not wet adhesive, any wet medium that you're using, I like to stamp out a couple different versions, like stamp out a couple different imprints, color them. If I like it, then I die cut it. So that's just what I like to do. Maybe you like to cut yours and stamp it and then color it. But I like this version, therefore I can kind of test what I like. Maybe if I do one bunny and I'm not in love with that color, I just move on over to the other one and I'm not really wasting all that time on die cutting as well. Okay, all I did with this was a really quick watercolor pencil. It maybe took 
three minutes at the most. And I just scribble over. I learned how to color in kindergarten and I have just stuck with it. I have not been certified as an expert watercolor. So I always tell people, if I can do it, you can do it. So I also used my lovely Easy Flow brushes and I used the fine tip to blend my watercolor pencil. All right, you guys, it's the time we've all been waiting for, a little fun flocking adventure. And I know a lot of you, a lot of my students in my classes have been asking to use some flocking. They said, Donna, we bought it, now show us how to use it. So here we go. What I tell people about flocking is the flocking and the glitter are in the same family. So you use flocking and glitter exactly the same. You use it with glues, you use it with tapes, you can use it with the double-sided adhesive sheets. It is not heat set. You do not use any heat on your flocking, simply adhesives. So what I'm gonna use tonight, we're gonna take it to the next level. I'm gonna use this fabulous Quickie glue pen and these are available at pinkandmain.com. And this is great because it's a transparent adhesive. So you can go right over your work and it just adds a little bit adhesive of adhesive and it's also dries tacky. So if you're doing a larger area, like when I'm gonna do my green here in a second, for those pieces that maybe dry kind of quick, I still have a tackiness that my flocking is going to stick to. So I am gonna be using sparkling AstroTurf first for my green. Now I do recommend with glitters and with flocking, if you're using a variety of colors, like darker and lighter colors, I'm gonna use my darker color first. So I'm gonna use my green here before I use my yellow and my pink. And I'm just gonna take my Quickie Glue Pen and I already watercolored it and I wasn't over the top with shading and everything on my watercolor because I knew that I was gonna be going over with my quickie glue pen and adding some flocking. So I'm not even tracing over these grass lines. I am just doing a little scribble method. Again, thank you kindergarten teacher for teaching me how to scribble. I'm gonna add a little extra glue and just like that, my glue is applied. And as you can see with a pen tip, it's much easier to add glue than if I was trying to use a larger adhesive. All right, just with glitter, you've got some tools that are necessity with flocking. So I am gonna go ahead and just sprinkle a nice big chunk of my flocking. And if you've never used flocking before, I would tell people it's just like a shaved stuffed animal. That's what this is. So flocking is really cool and there are definitely different types. You have flocking that is just the solid flock like this. And then you have the flocking that has that sparkle in it. And the great thing, it's all labeled flock with glitter. So, and then this just says flock. So you can see when you're going through the website, what you prefer and what you wanna order. And I'm gonna use flocking with and without glitter tonight. So when I told you you guys need a tool, another tool you need is your finger tool. Flocking is so light, it just kind of sits on top of your adhesive. So I then take my finger tool and I make sure that flock is getting pushed in to the glue for my Quickie Glue Pen. I'm just flipping that over, giving a little flick, and then look at that. You have an adorable, nice green color, nice and bright, but it's also a little transparent since it's not like a solid opaque glitter you can still see your stamp detail underneath it, which is what I really like about flocking. Okay, I am now going to take my coffee filter and again, create a little taco. Just tap that back into the jar. Another fun feature, these are nice wide mouth jars, makes it really easy for cleanup. I am now going to Make sure all my green is off my paper. And I'm gonna take my chick. Now, when you're covering over little animals, 
you want to make sure you're not going to cover up their eyeballs. So the trick that I do is I actually take my glue pen and I just kind of make a circle. I don't know if you could see the glare of the little eyeball, but I drew a circle around my eye. So I'm not coloring in my eyeball. I don't want to go over. And because this is just a chick, I'm just doing little circular motion. He doesn't have to be fully covered and I'm not touching any of my green. So I'm going to now take my lovely sparkling chickadee. That makes sense since the other one is chickadee and I am going to tap, tap, tap and I'm going to add a nice big chunk on that and I'm going to use my finger tool to push that in and I'm going to flip that over and tap that off. And now I have a cute, sparkly and fluffy, adorable little chick. And now you can see just how easy this is. So what you wanna keep in mind, and you can do a couple little test runs. So when you stamp all your stamps out and you start coloring them, you can also test what flocking has transparent glitter in it. What flocking has opaque glitter in it? And you can kind of see the different looks that are available and what you're looking for. So my little chick has a nice transparent glitter in it. So it's not too bold. It's very soft, it's very soft and cuddly, just like a little baby chick should be. Okay, I am then going to talk about my filter, tap that back into my jar, and then I am done with those two flocking colors. Again, that was Sparkling AstroTurf for the green, which is a flock with glitter, and Sparkling Chickadee, which is also flock with glitter for the yellow. So next I am going to, I was back and forth, like do I want to add some flock to my peep? And you know what I am gonna do instead, I think? I have cotton candy. Should I use cotton candy or go glitter? These are really tough decisions that, you know, a experienced crafter like me just still struggles with on a daily basis. Flock or glitter, which way do I go? I think I'm going to, here we go. I am gonna take my adorable little glue pen. Again, I am gonna just draw a circle around each eye and a circle around my nose so I don't color that in. And I am just gonna do little circles. I'm not covering up the edge. Little circles just like that all around, just scribbling. Basically I'm scribbling. Again, an amazing skill that I learned in kindergarten and it's just stuck with me. I am an amazing scribbler. That, that is where I really excel. Okay, now I'm happy with my bunny and I'm gonna add ice rink. It was a toss up, cotton candy or ice rink, but I actually like the look of my little peep already. It kind of looks marshmallowy the way that I did my watercolor pencil, which was also the scribble technique. I am gonna take my ice rink, what we used for our fabulous border. I want it to look sugar coated just like the peeps. And look at that, oh, it did, I love it. It's got a little soft pink and it's got that sugar coat sparkle that we love about those peeps. Who eats peeps? Who loves peeps? You raise your hand, are you a peep eater? Do you love them? All right, so there is my cute little, cute little peep and chick. And you know, just cause I have a glue pen in my hand, I think I'm just gonna add just a little bit more glitter. I'm just doing little lines and maybe just a couple little dots around the base of my basket. Tap, tap, tap. Just a little extra sparkle. After my peep and my chick, it's not overly noticeable. I could have used like an opaque glitter but now I've got just a little, you could see just a little bit of shimmer on my basket, my bow, and we're done. That guy, I'm just gonna set right there for a second. Taco up my coffee filter, 
tap that all in. And I am going to set my ice rink aside. This is that transparent glitter. And I am gonna go grab my tiny little roll of foam tape. It's kind of like a UFO coming into screen. Ooh. If you haven't checked out the lifetime supply of foam tape, head on over to the adhesive section and you will see this bad boy. And I love it. So I am going to flip over. I'm gonna probably do two little strips. There we go. One and two to just pop that guy up a little bit when we add it to our card and just throw it back on my desk. There we go. And what I tell people is all adhesives dry out. So I recommend sticking your tapes in plastic bags or the bag it came in if you don't use it all the time. I definitely keep my easy tear tapes out of the bag because I use them weekly, maybe sometimes daily. This I don't use as much, so I put it back in the bag and seal it up when I'm done just so that tackiness and that adhesive stays as strong as the first day I got it. All right, you guys, the next thing we're gonna do, told you tonight was all about layering. I am gonna use the mum dies, and I use them in an upcoming class here, as well as those plaid backgrounds. So I had them out and I decided I wanted some flowers with my adorable little peep and chick basket card. So we are gonna layer those first, and I'm not gluing my basket on yet. I'm just gonna kinda set it there for a visual. And I am going to, I have three layers of each. So these actually come one step bigger. So this is using the fourth layer, but I wanted them just a little bit smaller, not as large as the largest one here. So I just did three of the dies, the three smallest versus adding the large one. And I am gonna start by using my fingernail tool and I simply just curl up my mom's. Very simple technique. You can use your fingernails. You don't have to go looking for a special tool. And I am going to do that guy there. And I think I'm going to go, I'm going to add this guy. I was going to put the flowers underneath, but actually I think I'm going to have them just curled up a little on top. So we are ready to add our basket. And I want, you know, I think I'm gonna use that glitter mark as where my basket is sitting. And look at that, you've just got a nice little raised image, not too high, but adds a fun another step in your card. Okay, for my flower, I am just using my craft glue and I'm gonna take a little glue here and I'm gonna set my first one right about there. I'm gonna take my second flower here using those fabulous fingernail tools. Add a little adhesive. You can even use your rolly adhesive. And I like to make sure they're not just layered on top. I kind of spin them around a little bit so they cover up the background. And then I'm gonna take that third one. And again, I'm just gonna curl that up Add a little wet adhesive and I'm gonna repeat that step with my second one and you could even add a little foam between layers to kind of make it even more dimensional but I am just gonna glue them all together one two three I'm adding this one down here And when I was designing this card and laying it out, it was really hard for me to cover up that plaid background, even just adding this border. It's such a cute background. It's like, oh, but I love it. Can I just have something floating on it? But adding that border really helped kind of layer this card much nicer than if I just had it floating in my plaid background. So it all turned out good. I was okay at the end. I'm all right with it. I'm all right covering up some of my beautiful plaid for some beautiful scalloped borders. Okay, third layer. Now this die does come with a centerpiece, this guy here, but I 
I'm going to instead use my crafty friends and enamel dots. These are super cute. And I'm gonna use the two large yellow ones here. And I'm gonna take that guy and just pop it right in there. As well as that guy there and just pop it right in there. And the next thing I'm gonna do, my final, the final show for tonight is I am gonna show you a really quick and easy technique how to add glitter and get a really cool look. All you do is take, so for instance, the reason I did this is I wanted like a nice light green, but I only had kind of this darker green. This probably would work perfect actually, but I'm gonna show you this cool technique instead. But yeah, that would be totally fine. But I had this darker green and this color. I wasn't quite sure. So instead, I wanted it to be more matchy match. So I took that green cardstock that I'm using and I added a little bit from the sheet of the double sided adhesive. And this is the easy tear adhesive sheets. There's two different pack sizes available. So check that out. And then I ran my leaf through my die cut machine. You want to do the adhesive sheet side up just like this and always make sure you trim off any exposed adhesive. You don't want to run this through your die cut machine with the edge of the adhesive exposed because you're basically gluing that to your plates and no one wants sticky plates. That's just something you end up cleaning up. It's a pain in the bum. All right. So the technique I'm showing you guys is very simple. I've ran those through my die cut machine. I am now going to peel off that protective paper. I am setting that down. That is leaf number one and leaf number two. Again, for all the products you see tonight, you can head on over to pinkandmain.com and have fun shopping them. And then when you check out, if you put in code DEMODONNA, D-E-M-O-D-O-N-N-A, all one word, you will receive an additional 10% off of your purchase of all products, excluding the subscriptions. And even if you already have a discount or anything, just put in code DEMODONNA so Pink and Main knows I sent ya. All right, so I just poured ice rink on top of my leaves. I am going to use my finger tools to push that down. You know, there's a common theme. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle your glitter or your flock. Use your finger tools to push it in just like this. And then it's your cleanup brush time. With this technique, you don't really need much of a cleanup brush. But you can see how that's now a soft green and it totally coordinates with my project. Where if I used the opaque glitter, the darker color, color, it would have just popped and stood out a lot more, which in some cases that's what you want. But in this case, I wanted my leaves to be subtle, but sparkly. Okay, ice rink is over there. I am now going to take my two little leaves and I am just kind of using my fingernail tool again and just kind of bending them. I'm using my fingernail tool right down the middle kind of add a little bit of texture and a little bit of volume to my leaves. And I'm gonna add some wet adhesive. There we go. And let's see, I think I want this guy right there. Take my fingernail tool again and make sure that's adhered to my card. And then I'm gonna do the same with this one add a little wet adhesive. I know I keep, I'm kind of running out of both of my adhesives that I have, so it's time to get some more. Stick my leaf down back there and I'm using my fingernail tool to make sure it's nice and adhered. And there we have it. Of course you can add a cute little saying. I was thinking of putting a little tag with some of the sayings that come in the kit, like you're so sweet or sweet Easter greetings, but after all the fun I had here, I just decided to skip the sane and just go with a really fun card. So there is everything. We used Borders, brand new in February. We used the awesome plaid set with the layering dies, the fabulous enamel dots by Pink and Main, and of course, 
the new for peep's sake the stamp set with the coordinating dies the mum dies and yes we had a lot of fun flocking and playing with the glitter glue pen easy tear tape lots of techniques so i would love to hear from you if you're watching the replay did you learn anything new tonight have you played with flock or glitter on your tapes before i hope you guys all learned a few tips and techniques thank you so much for watching have a fabulous night and bye bye